Okay, I want to teach you a little bit about soil and mixing your own media. Here I have a mixture of peat and perlite that we've just mixed up well in this, uh, this kind of wheelbarrow that we typically use. Uh, this is a mixture, like I said, of peat and perlite. Um, perlite is volcanic in origin. You can have different um, diameter size, different coarseness of the perlite. This is uh, really a coarse perlite. Uh, we also have this fine perlite. It's just the same thing that's been crushed up more so. Uh, we use the thicker, coarser perlite on larger size containers and the smaller perlite on starts uh, and smaller container plants. The perlite helps water drain through. It's completely sterile and it's very light, so it's easy for shipping. It helps the plants, uh, helps the water drain through, gives a lot of aeration for root growth. Um, perlite is very dusty and you don't want to get that dust up in your throat. It'll really cause a problem. So when we're mixing soil, we have somebody with a mist hose spraying it down so we can turn that. Uh, next to me here, we have the peat moss, which is taken out of peat bogs. This is old aquatic material, vegetation that has uh, gone uh, aerobic to the bottom, settled out, stayed there for a long time until the peat bog is drained and then this stuff is mined out of there. This isn't really a, a good sustainable product because it is, it is mined and so peat moss is being replaced by coconut core and a lot of these mixes but we typically use a peat perlite mix and then depending on what we're growing and what the water needs are, depends on how much peat and perlite percentages. And so we'll say things like, hey, it's a 50-50 mix. That means it's light, it's airy, it drains well. This is a 50-50 mix. Uh, we could, if we're growing cacti or succulents or something and we wanted it to drain quicker, we would add more perlite. If we were growing something heavier or meant to go outside, uh, different types of container plants, we would add more peat moss. We also have uh, vermiculite, which could be substituted for the peat moss. It's a water holding um, product. We typically just, vermiculite's a little more expensive, so we tend to just put it as a light seed cover, like when we're doing a hydroponic uh, situation, or if we're starting tomato seeds, we'll sprinkle a little vermiculite over the top because it holds moisture and it helps the seeds um, be in contact with uh, moisture. Vermiculite is this uh, flakes of this uh, mica type material that holds the moisture really well. And so these aren't the only products for mixing soil. Regionally, these are some of the best. Uh, there is no nutritional value in any of these products and they're all sterile. And so whatever you do from this point forward, you have to add nutrients, you have to add um, beneficial microbes and bacteria if that's what you're doing. Um, but this is a nice, sterile, lightweight starting mix. And that's how we mix soil at Yavapai. Okay, this behind me is our composting system at YC. We used to just have a big, nasty pile of all the scraps that came out of the greenhouse and out of the fish bay. This was fish emulsion, fish poop, fish food. This was dead fish. This was a plants, old tomatoes, uh, cuttings, trimmings. We make a lot of green material that comes out of there. And along with that comes all of the the soil that we've made, the peat and perlite mixes come back out here. Uh, what we try to do is keep um, really pernicious weeds from getting out here if there's something that I feel um, could be a detriment to coming back into the greenhouse or out into our organic area, we would keep that out. For instance, Bermuda grass or we get really bad oxalis in the greenhouse, any persistent really bad weeds or if we come up with a disease issue that's uh, that's something pretty bad, we'll go ahead and throw that stuff away and not bring it out into the compost. But behind me is a mix of about three to four months worth of all the stuff coming out of the greenhouse. We built this really nice um, block bin with filled with concrete so that we can drive a tractor to lift and turn this. And so when you look at this, you got a mix in here. We got geranium cuttings from trimming up the house plants last week. Uh, you got old tomatoes that didn't make it. Um, here's a bunch of tomatoes and you see the, the dead plant material and such. So this all gets piled in here. Here's an actual chili pepper. But we don't want the seeds from this chili pepper to end up going through the process of composting uh, and then out into the organic garden and turn into chili plants growing everywhere. We want to come in here with the tractor and we're going to do two things. We're going to aerate and we're gonna add water. 
aerate and add water. We do that by lifting with the tractor. We could get in here and hand shovel this, but this is probably going on five to 10 cubic yards worth of material. So it's time to get this really composted, send it out of here. And as you see, a lot of the coarser stuff is on the top. It's breaking down, down in here as we get down in deep in this pile, you see some really composted, well broken down products. And we want to make sure the internal temperature inside here is going up into the 140, 160 degree range in case there are any seeds, big coarse materials such as this. And this is actually, this is weeds from the organic garden last year. So this is a little scary for me because all these have seed heads on them and these are a weedy um, non-native grass. So what needs to happen is this pile needs to get turned and broken down enough and heated up enough so that um, and so that these things are killed and any potential disease is um, killed. And so we'll continue to turn this and we'll move a lot of this material out. Realistically, we need to have a couple of these bins, one for raw material here and one for finishing material um, over here. We'll work on that. And um, all this organic material is going to go over here into the organic garden. And see, we have a nice lush cover cup growing now. All this organic material will get utilized in that type of production. Here is our composting soil probe where temperatures can get up in this uh, 140, 160 range. We're hoping for that. This probe goes down deep into the compost pile and helps us understand when our um, uh, aerobic breakdown is happening. When that's happening, temperatures creep up. Then the temperatures will drop back down again. It's time to turn the pile and it's time to add some moisture. If it's not like a wrung out a wet sponge, it's time to add some moisture and a lot of times in Arizona you're adding moisture pretty frequently.